Hey everybody, how are you? My name is Alex Markov. I'm one of the co-founders of Red Key Solutions, and with us I have Paul Grenzi. Um, you should see his video as well. Say hi, Paul. Hello, everybody. Paul is another co-founder of Red Key. Um, we have people coming in now, so welcome to our webinar on Microsoft Teams usage tips and just to be a, a much better Teams operator. Um, we live in this world today that pandemic came quick um, and businesses that were not ready to use to collaborate and, and use a, a group chat um, definitely needed to catch up. Businesses that have been using it for a long time um, can pr probably learn a few things from this webinar as well. So this will give you some good best practices and, and tell you about how modern companies are collaborating, meeting, talking, and working uh, using Teams from anywhere in the world. So that is the, the overview of this webinar. And submit any questions you have to uh, the Q&A section. We'll have a little bit of time at the end to answer it. And please also fill out our poll um, to tell us about how, how well your organization uses Teams. So uh, let's dive in. So Microsoft Teams is kind of the new version of back in the day with Skype. Microsoft acquired Skype and now there's Microsoft Teams. And here it is. It is an app which just allows us to um, to chat, um, and I'll go over the different sections here. Here are the modules in Microsoft Teams. Um, as you can see here is my chat with Paul. Um, and here are all the direct chats here. So you can use Microsoft Teams on a, um, on a, a computer. You can use it on a cell phone, on an iPad. So instead of using iMessage it, for your business, we, we chat through Teams wherever we are in the world. Um, so these are direct chats. You can also add individual people to chats as well. You can say, um, just add somebody here. Um, this is how you say, hey, Paul. And Paul can answer me here. Um, and, and then um, you are also able to take a screenshot and post it in here. So it's, for example, um, Let's pretend we're talking about Red Key Solutions. We're looking to, for a new IT partner. So I can say, hey, Paul, take a look at this. And I could take a screenshot and say, take a look at this IT firm, shameless plug. Um, you can also edit things as well. So let's say I didn't, I put a typo in here for like this. You can edit a post. Um, and then Paul can come back and say, yeah, you know what? Our, our technology is really not that great. And and he can start come talking to us about that. Um, also, another thing you can do is GIFs. So we live and die by GIFs. Um, you could do that and basically say like this, right? And then Paul can reply with a GIF. There's other cool stuff in here for stickers. So you could say, Here's a little doge. Um, always a good time. You could do that. Um, so stickers are pretty cool. There's lots of little different stickers and to speak and talk. And um, you could say I've had way too much coffee today, right? So it really makes it a lot more fun to work, to be quite honest. Um, another cool thing is you can just video call somebody. So for example, I'm just gonna video call Paul right now. Oops, let me actually turn off my webcam. And then Paul's gonna pick up. Hey, Paul. And now Paul's picking up on a cell phone because he's using the computer to drive um, a, a, in the webinar as well. So you see, he picked up on a cell phone, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we can also continue to chat right here on the right. And then let's say we're talking about bringing on a new IT partner. And let's say we wanna add Jason because Jason's part of the decision-making process. And we could just say, hey, let's add Jason. So this little button here allows you to add participants. And let's give Jason a call. Hey, Jason. How are you? You're on a webinar with a lot of people. <laughs> 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 
Good, good. And then while you're on the webinar speaking, you can raise your hand or while you're in a, in a Teams chat, you can put little emotions. This is the way you control your device settings up here. So this is a one of the things that if you're in um, in a Teams uh, chat, to get to device settings is important. So you can see we have, I actually test a lot of Plantronics headsets. So I have this headset, this headset, and Artist Pro Wireless is what I highly recommend for really the best possible sound. It's a gaming grade headset. Um, you can change the webcam here. So this is how you manage this here. You can also apply background effects. As you can see, I'm actually not in the office. Um, that's our real office back here, but it's just a background effect. Um, you can record here. And um, also, if you wanted to, since if you have, if you're using Teams Voice, which I'll talk about in a little bit, you can just dial a phone number, right? I'm not going to do this um, because I don't want to put somebody on the spot, but you could dial a phone number right in here, and it can bring them right into the um, the conversation. So it's it transcends um, phone and collaboration um, by using this. So that is that. Also, Jason could say, uh, let me share my screen to the team. So let me share my main screen, right? And I could say, look at this IT firm, Red Key Solutions, guys. Uh, you know what, our, our IT has really been pretty slow and we, we're definitely not up with the times. Um, hey, Jason, take a look at this IT firm and, I could, and Jason can request control. And then we can collaborate and, and have a, a meeting right here. Jason, can you rest control? He did. Ah, perhaps, right? Oh, there it is. Yep, so now Jason's mouse is on the screen too at the same time. So this is all through Microsoft Teams, as you guys can see. Um, so he can move, if you can, move around, Jason, scroll, highlight things. So this is extremely powerful. To be honest, on some level, it's more powerful than working in an office if everyone is working at their computers. Because typically, if you're going into a conference room, one person's controlling the computer and the other person, everyone else is watching. Maybe they're on iPad, on, on laptops. But with this, everyone's on their computer and everyone could continue to work um, in one screen. So this is so powerful. If somebody's not using this, it, you should be on a daily basis. So um, a couple other things that could stop sharing. There's also a lot of like annotation uh, things. So this is how you can do collaboration on an individual chat. So thanks so much, Jason, for your input and assistance. And we'll go back to um, back to Teams. Thank you. So now I ended this. Let me turn on my webcam and Zoom again. And I'm back. So as you can see here, we can we had this entire conversation here. Um, you can pop this chat out is another cool feature. So I can say, let me just make this chat just here so I can have two parallel chats. See that? It's pretty cool. And then we have to go into actual teams. So actual teams is where you have almost departments or teams, right? And these are the teams that we have. We have a general chat. We have a Corona social distancing chat, um, which has turned into a free for all of just memes and funny uh, things to keep our spirits up. Um, we have a team leaders chat. So these are all department heads. Then we have uh, different chats for different projects we have going on, different clients we're engaged with. Um, we have different division chats. We have a whole blockchain division at Red Key. Um, service leaders are people specifically involved in managing service and the leaders in those teams. Um, we have a solutions team chat, BCIO chat, sales chat, marketing, accounting, leadership team, principals, executives, all different ways to slice um, people into different com relevant conversations. We have a whole paintball warriors chat where people are uh, chatting about paintball. And then we even have direct chats with certain clients that we're working with. Um, so I only, I only have the ones that I'm invited in for various reasons, but we have direct chats with certain clients in here as well. So in here, let me tell you about how to make a team. So now 
making a team is primarily reserved for people that are um, admins of teams. So if you if you had engaged with RedKey to set up your Microsoft Teams, initially we would help you set up a logical framework um, for uh, how to use Teams. But let me go in here. Let's just make a Teams from scratch. If you are not, if you are an admin today, you can do this. So let me just do a a private team. Let's make this the estimating team. So you can create this. Thank you, Microsoft. And then I can add Paul to this. And I could also add Jason to this. And I can make Paul an owner of this team. So he can also add people to it. So now this is a team for estimating. And I could say, hey guys, we have a large project um, that an organization, oops, wants us to bid they are sending over the RFP. And then Jason and Paul could uh, reply to this. And this is a the same function as a regular Teams chat. You can do GIFs, you can do the same things. Um, the main difference here is when you do a meet now, it will call all the people on that team. So let's just try this real quick. You could see here. So you can also use this as take a link and in, maybe invite somebody even external out. You can add individual participants, but since I called everyone that was on the general chat, Jason's on there. Jason just joined us. Hey, Jason, again, how are you? <laughs> um, and then Paul would have gotten a call as well, uh, but he's also doing the Zoom webinar. So we're doing like an inception thing where it's screen within screens and um, so far we're doing pretty good actually right so far so far all right so thanks jason again and alex we have a couple of questions for when you're ready okay yeah we'll, we'll, we'll knock those out in a little bit and um so you can also call people out by name here as well so you can say um at jason like this um the rfp came to your inbox can you uh, pick the right architect to design the solution. So this allows them to call it out and this will come up bold in Jason's um, teams and it will also pop up somewhere. Um, you can do control shift to do an important message. This is a big project. I believe that should have worked. There's that technical difficulties. You can translate. Um, you can pin pin it. I don't know. I thought these control shift used to work. Moving on. Uh, and best practices is talk within the thread. So let's say, for example, we started this thread, but then we say we have a project in Cali that's coming in hot. Jason just showed you, by the way, yeah. control shift I, it does work. Oh, control shift I, yes, sorry. Control shift I, and let's make this an important project. This is big. Yep, so that's how you make it, a control shift I. Um, and see, now we have a thread for the Cali project and we have a thread for the city project. So the best practice is reply in the thread. Um, and another best practice is don't let your things sprawl. So let's say, for example, we wanted to now make a channel just for the Cali project. Right. And I can automatically add this to everyone here. So now we have a different channel, but be careful about adding too many channels. Be logical with it. Try not to let it sprawl because we've definitely seen situations where channels do sprawl and there's a lot created and there are a lot of them not being active. So be really mindful about which channels you create. Alex, did you reference the um, call out that Jason did where he actually called your name? Yes, that's you press okay. at Jason. So I could do at Paul um, and I could say, take a look at this. 
And this is important because in all of the notifications that are going on, that's going to stand out for me. And under activities as well, it will show here. Now, quick micro um, view into files. So if you um, are on SharePoint, you'll be able to add um, files in here. So let's just go to um, our general chat and you can click on files here. You can see these are all our files in SharePoint. So these correspond to in my computer to these. See this? So for anyone that is not yet on SharePoint, it's a total game changer. For those that are on Ignite, Ignite's also pretty awesome. But if you're not on SharePoint, it will change your world. Um, and our next webinar in two weeks is actually going to be on SharePoint and how amazing it is and, and how to use it and how it can replace traditional share drives to really even take collaboration to a whole entirely new level, right? So that is here. Um, Moving on, you can want also sync the files. So let's say, for example, let's see if this works. It sometimes takes a minute to set up a SharePoint site. Let's see, yep, so it worked. So now I could press sync here, and this will actually put that folder on my desktop um, or in, in my computer, actually. Let me just say it like that. So as you can see here, it's, a, it's going to put the folder in here. It might still take a minute because we just created this. And um, now it's coming in. And it's it's using Microsoft OneDrive to sync the files over. But now this allows you to sync the files locally. So when we move to SharePoint and, and moved away from traditional share drives, we, we basically moved all of our files into these individual teams. So now this is the estimating group we just created. Right, and then you could just post the file in here. So let's say we wanted to copy a picture of Jason and his new amazing baby. And Alex, philosophically, this is replacing map drives from a file server structure. Yep, it works just like um, uh, one. It works like Dropbox, and now you see this file is here. This is Jason's cool little baby. Um, Bryce, he's the man. And then you can go in here and in a second, once this syncs up, that same file is gonna show up right in here as well. And there's other cool things here, um, like there's a, is a wiki for a team. So that's a, a really cool function. So you can say, let me just put down a bunch of information. You could put meeting agenda notes, keep that recurring every single time you have a meeting, let's say, status meeting 318, right? And this is agenda. And then everyone in that team has access to this. So that's really, really uh, amazing as well. Um, so you can always have a full history of all the meetings that you had. So meeting notes um, for this individual team. And again, this is fully accessible on your iPad and your cell phone at any time, which is incredible. There's also a lot of different other apps. So uh, Teams is gonna be a major, piece of the future of the modern workplace. There's Lucidchart. If you guys have work, been working with us, you know that we like to chart out and frame and, and create workflows and, and map out how the, everything works in our company. And we, we work on with clients as well on that. Um, you can attach to Visio here. You, there's infinite apps now being created for Microsoft Teams, which will put them right into here. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Um, and then the other really important thing is you, when you're making an appointment, so let's say I wanted to make an appointment here with Paul for next week. So we can do SharePoint uh, webinar brainstorming, right? And I can go in here in your calendar and I can invite Paul, but I can click this Teams button and it automatically puts the invitation right in here. So if I send this to Paul now, he can press and join that right from the appointment. So if you've been using Zoom, go to meeting, this will replace that and it's far better. You can invite people from outside your company into it. Um, we have moved, I would say 90 something percent of our meetings into Teams. We still use Zoom once in a while um, because maybe some people that we don't engage with or um, that they 
they prefer Zoom more, but um, like if they're a new client or something like that, I think our new client stuff is still done through that. Um, and Teams Voice is coming as well. So we have a, a major um, uh, backlog and a waiting list for Teams Voice right now. And Microsoft itself has a major backlog where they're, they're, they have massive delays on porting numbers. Uh, but if you email your VCIO, if you're interested in Teams Voice, it puts your whole phone system right in Microsoft Teams. It's $20 a user. So everyone we move to the modern phone system allows has saved money on their phones and has revolutionized the way that they um, use their phones. Your voicemail is here, your history. So Teams Voice is, is awesome. It's a, it's a phone system built into Teams. You can also have a, a standard desk phone sitting on your desk, um, which has a little touch screen. It's little little Microsoft Teams in a little Android touch screen. Um, so please reach out. And that's the, the overview. I'll, I'll do just a, a quick overview on RedKey and about what we do. Um, me and Paul are the two co-founders. We've been in tech since the, the early 90s. Uh, we started RedKey in 2002, and our mission is to redefine work. Um, we want to change the way that work is is performed by all organizations out there. The technology is here today to do that. It will improve people's lives. It improves people's businesses, their livelihoods. So it's a, it's a mission that we take really, um, uh, really close to heart. And we support a, a lot of big businesses in the New York City area. Startups, even small businesses have under management as well. Um, if you're an active client that wants to get on Microsoft Teams, email help at RedKeySolutions.com or email or talk to your VCIO. If you're a new client and you want to uh, engage with us and learn about Microsoft Teams and all the cool things that we do, go here and schedule a consultation. It'll pop up a link to allow you to schedule with Calendly, um, which is the other thing that we use here is you can also embed Microsoft Teams into Calendly that if somebody schedules a meeting with you, it automatically adds the Teams link there. Um, so uh, let me jump into some Q&A right now. Somebody says uh, they don't see- You might see... want to turn on your camera again, by the way. Oh, thank you. Somebody says, I don't see GIFs as an option on my instance of Teams. Is it possible the company suppressed the GIF option? Yes, it's possible the Teams administration is is very granular. Teams is being used by organizations of all sizes and compliance requirements in the world. So it is possible that the, that button was hidden. Um, and I think all the other questions that we have, I answered while we were speaking live. Um, uh, there was one about how to admit someone to a video chat and then remove them and add them back again. Yes. Yeah, so here under specific chats. So let's say in here, if I want to add somebody in here, I can add them and then you can show that right now. Let's see, so I can add somebody to a chat. So this is not to an actual call, but actually physically add them. So now look, it created a new chat between Jason and Paul, but then I can also go in here and I could just remove Jason from this chat. And now it's back to a this orphaned chat with Paul. So that's pretty cool. So I hope, I hope everybody learned something from this. Um, we're going to have a lot more webinars coming. We've we got launched more a, questions. a new uh, division. Oh, in. perfect. Yeah. So if you're doing Teams video meeting, how do you admit, remove, and add back to the video meeting? So if you are to do this, let's say I want to call Paul again. And then I also, so my webcam isn't working because I'm using it through Zoom. But then I want to also call Jason again. Right. So you press this little button up here to invite people. And now Jason should be popping back in for the third time. And I can also mute participant, pin him, make him an attendee or remove him from the meeting right here. So that's how to do that. So I, hey Jason, are you in there? Okay, cool, cool. And then see, I could just remove Jason right here and you could do this also for a phone number as well. So if you add a phone number in here, and if you have Teams voice enabled and you've set up a phone system with us, um, Jason can also pop back in because he's in, in he's, he has high uh, level rights in, the, in our teams. Um, and somebody says, how far um, are questions, uh, how far 
is history maintained. So I believe it's for a very long time, uh, infinite. I don't think there's a limit to be quite honest. And I think that especially with, if you're in a compliance based business, we can enable um, a lot of uh, archiving and, and other things. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's forever. And we also have a third party cloud backup that runs on top of the SharePoint Office 365 um, cloud. So we've seen hackers actually target the Office 365 cloud again. And, and, and so we can recover things as well. We've even had accidental user deletions that we were able to recover with that. So, mm -hmm. and somebody says our chats saved in history are deleted once the meeting is over. I they are saved in history. You can go back, um, and definitely best practices. It, this is a company level asset in the same way as email is. So, if you have private com conversations, um, you know they are on the company um, machine. So. I would say be you know be conscious that what you put in here in the same way same thing with the Microsoft email with the email as well, um, and then somebody says talk for a moment about approval process ability on Teams, um, and that's specifically for um, at making Teams channels things like that. If somebody can elaborate, I think Peter is asking that. Um, we can so for. I think I answered, I think I know your questions. Can you limit who can create teams and things like that? Yes, you can. We can create an admin so you can work with your VCIO um, and your project engineer that's running this to customize it however it is. It's infinitely customizable. Um, and if you're an organizer and want to leave the meeting without interrupting the meeting, can that be done? Yes, I believe you just can leave. Um, so I can leave this meeting and Paul and Jason could continue speaking on this meeting as well. Absolutely. We even did that with a third party vendors uh, team session the other day. Yep. We also have a lot of uh, third party people, as Paul said, are, are use, collaborating with this on Teams, our clients as well. Somebody says, can Teams be used to replace CRM systems? So um, Teams could be integrated into CRM systems in some regard, um, and especially Microsoft Dynamics CRM is integrated. Um, I, I, I don't believe we've integrated it fully into our Salesforce yet, but I think that it, there's, there's potentially some integration points, um, and we've it, we've done a good chunk of integrations with the whole Office 365 ecosystem and, and CRM system. So Office 365, you can. Um, specifically Microsoft Teams, I don't believe you can at this time. Let's see. I th think those are all the questions. Um, oh, somebody is asking about approval process for purchase order. So there's a lot of other new functions in Teams. There's bookings, which allows, it's kind of a Calendly replacement. We, we have not used it yet. We still think that um, Calendly is the strongest and easiest to use um, uh, booking uh, app um, for a number of reasons, but this is really cool as well. So you can create a new booking type. Um, there's a calendar in here. Um, there is files. So this is all of your files in here as well. Um, there's tasks by planner. So this allows you to make little task lists. Um, so this is also very, very cool. Um, you can make, like say a new task list. Alex, this feels a lot like Asana. Yeah, it's just like Asana, just like monday.com. There's an approvals tab. So uh, Microsoft has added a lot of these within the last year. Oh, um, and there's also, there's also Alex, there's like surveys and polls that you can generate. Mm -hmm. There's uh, praise and feedback features. So I think one of the things to say about this is when we all went remote, we needed a lot more depth to the communication. The social interaction around a water cooler is very different than an email. <clears throat> and all of these praise features and emojis and gifts and all these other pieces and bells and whistles add some of that human component uh, back into remote communications, or at least that's what I've noticed. For sure, yeah. Um, and there's another one they added shifts here as well. We're not using this because we have a, um, a whole service management app, but there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of it's still new. So please just take it with a, a grain of salt a little bit. I would when not. Alex, if, Steve is mentioning uh, charts like uh, Gantt charts or timeline, visual timelines. Yeah. Which is really useful stuff. Yeah. So in Planner, I believe you can do that. 
if you're using something like Asana today, um, it's still we still use Asana over Planner. It's still a little bit more powerful and flexible, but it, a lot in the future, a lot of things are moving into Teams. But you can also go into apps and you can also add some of your favorite apps. So let's say Asana. Asana does have a Teams integration, so mm -hmm. you can go in here and just add it right into here, and you can go right into Asana. Now, again, it's still not perfect. There's still a lot of these apps are still not as fully functional. Um, now, Alex, somebody's I asking think, for Gantt chart specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, there's also another question coming in behind that about shifts. But um, <clears throat> why don't why don't you tackle that one? Yeah. So about Gantt charts, you can go in here, and if you're using, um, I believe you're using Microsoft Project. There's Microsoft Roadmap. This is a whole other thing they just added. Um, if you're using Microsoft Projects, or if you're using another project solution, you can just add this in here. But if you're using Microsoft Project, you can add this, and you can tag a Gantt chart from Microsoft Project from within SharePoint right into the Teams right up here, which is pretty amazing. So let's create a new project. Um, I don't have a project license, so um, that won't work. but. You can also put Ignite in here. If you are using Ignite, um, Ignite's an awesome solution as well. You can just add Ignite and you can are able to um, tie in uh, files. Um, we also moved away from Ignite uh, recently because we wanted to get fully into the Microsoft ecosystem. Ignite is still a little bit more powerful for contractors sharing large files um, and some uh, other uses, maybe some specific compliance uses. There's some. Ignite still has a place, um, but I would say in two to three years, SharePoint is definitely. If somebody's asking a question. How can I first my workers in my? Go in here, a part of Teams. This little play with it. Then for YouTube, how to set this up? I don't think our team set this up. Either. Um, but this is a way you can start to uh, make groups here, reorder groups, delete groups. So I would say play around with it and see if it can be uh, better to you. You can filter. And there's all the stuff that's added very recently. Uh, if you want to on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of content on a lot of technical things doing live demos of how we use things. And um, I think those are all the questions. Thank you so much for all the time. And hope everyone has a great day. And be well and stay safe.